Aloha, and welcome to the one within all. Friends, if you're a frequent listener to Interverse, then I think it's safe to assume that you're not afraid to think outside of the box or try things that others won't. When it comes to creating the ideal life for ourselves, most of us eventually reach the point where it becomes clear that following the prescriptions of Western culture is going to get you into sketchy scenarios, especially in the arena of health. And it's obvious to anyone paying attention that problems like obesity, food toxicity, and the pain pill epidemic are all marching forward at what seems to be a deliberate pace, one set in motion by the demonic super corporations. Every day these developments are looking less like profit-driven inevitabilities of global commerce and more like elaborately planned operations, as the perfect storm of environmental destruction and societal toxicity has reached unfathomable proportions. My guest today is Kyler Brown, a close personal friend and peaceful warrior dedicated to the cause of helping others with holistic health. Although we hadn't planned on making an episode, Kyler and I got together today and our conversation was really too good to keep to ourselves. With so many simple and practical ways that we can improve our health without the money mafias of hospitals and health insurance, I feel it's important to revisit even the most basic of holistic medicines and make sure that everyone that wants to know what's good for them has the information they need. Kyler has been on the show a few times in the past to talk about things like elderberry and CBD-based medicines, but every time we talk, he's got new information, research, and passion to bring to the situation. As someone that's personally kept the colds and flus away using elderberry juice and have even planted a few bushes in my backyard, I'm well aware of the incredibly effective ways that nature provides for us to keep ourselves in optimal shape. So everyone, please join me in sending some loving appreciation to our guest Kyler Brown. Check out his websites in the show notes where you can find Elderberry Depot and the CBD company he works with, Bloom. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. I love you. I, lo- <laughs> I love you too, brother. <laughs> so before we started recording, we were getting into the reasons that it's difficult to help others to make better choices, mostly because you simply can't force people to do anything. And, and it's just the, the lives that everyone lives nowadays. You know, everyone is so busy. Everyone is so involved in routines. And that, that could also just be my expectation. Well, the thing with helping others is there's the overhelping, and that's harmful. The best metaphor I know for this is if you see a little baby turtle trying to <laughs> climb up the stairs, and he's obviously too small to go up even the first step, and you pick him up and take him to the top of the stairs, you didn't really help the turtle because it's going to fall down the stairs when it tries to get back down and hurt itself and it can't get back up there again. It's not really ready or meant to be up there. So to Turtles speak. also shouldn't climb stairs, though. It's just, but this is just a metaphor, know, symbolic metaphor. It could go for anybody. It, it applies, just apply that idea to anybody that's trying to do something for themselves. If you, if they can't do it for themselves and you have to do it completely for them, then they're not ready to be at that stage in the first no, place. No, absolutely. they're not responsible enough for whatever it is that you're trying to give them yeah and the correct way of helping metaphorically would be you're going on through your own business not out of your way per se doing what is right for you to be doing or helping where you know you're needed Mm -hmm. and in the case course of doing that you see let's say a group of four or five guys trying to carry some really heavy piece of equipment or furniture and they're struggling that it's it's slipping you can tell they're, they're really straining and you run up and grab the thing by the corner that is most sagging and needed a hand and you carry it over to where they're going and then as it's set down you just disappear before they even notice that you helped them that's like real helping because yeah, that's in no way did you compromise their self-confidence or idea that they could do it for themselves and they were trying as hard as they could and you just you just gave that little boost of energy to make it happen right that's what I always say about helping. Those are my two helping parables. <laughs> no, and those were great, great parables. I meant more along the lines of, I guess, sparking someone into action. That's why I record podcasts. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's... That's the hard thing to do, though, because there's so many places that are needed in change terms that people are just, like, closed off to any of it because it's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah, it's like, where do you start? What do you do? I personally would try, I always try to tell people, start with meditation. 
because it's the easiest thing you can do that has the most dramatic expansion effect on you. But even people who are, I can't get anybody to like take that advice. Only someone who is drawn to it basically is going to do it and everyone already knows about it. So it's like, I don't know if it's helpful for me to talk about it all the time. I just did an episode <laughs> that was two hours about meditation. For me, it was helpful because I learned a lot of stuff that I was going to use. So I guess it's still good to do conversations like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, think about how advertising and marketing works, um, especially online marketing. You are basically just planting a seed and then you are continuing to water that seed every time that your advertisement pops up in somebody. And according to statistics, it's not until on average the seventh or eighth time that someone actually sees that advertisement that they actually buy. You yeah. Know? So it's it's literally just that's just how energy works in general, especially in the reality that we live in today. We're so bombarded with constant influence by others. That's why it has to be self-directed. Yeah. That's why. And then you just are looking to others for inspiration, not influence. Yeah. You're like, oh, let's see what they did there. I could do that. Not, oh, that's what they're doing. I have to do that. There's like two different mindsets. I don't know. I like where you're, where you're going with that, though. <laughs> with podcasting, it's a huge amount of you're asking them for a really expensive purchase. Even though it's totally free, mm -hmm. you're saying, hey, will you give me an hour of your time? <laughs> Attention is a really high value currency and so is time. Yeah. Well, time is like the most undervalued concept in today's reality. Well, it's misguided. Our value of it is misguided. Yeah. It's like we value it for the wrong reasons in the wrong way. Yeah. Like we, we're, we jealously guard our time for our own personal ends that are in pursuit of this commerce monopoly game. Yeah. And instead of looking at our time every moment as an opportunity to bring light to others, like, I don't visit my grandma enough, you know? <laughs> I'm so busy wrapped up in all my own shit. Yeah. I completely ignore some important elders in my life that care about me and that I care about them. And it's that's the hell of the time thing, man. There's Once you get to a certain point, there's way too many people to actually effectively express that you care about them and want them in your life. Oh that's my why gosh, I hate yeah. this living in boxes t two miles apart from everybody. Uh -huh. Because if we were all sort of in this little village area where we could walk to each other's houses and it was like family units that way, at least I would see my immediate family pretty often. Right. And then I could like go over to the Kyler tribe or whatever. And then later in life, you know, our parents or grandparents die off. Maybe we'll just make tribes that are based on friend networks instead. But I don't know. <laughs> I just hate this whole neighborhood game. It's fucking stupid. Oh, it's ridiculous. And I'm surrounded by people who don't have a single thing in common with me um, <laughs> as far as what we spend our time doing. Yeah, yeah. In this neighborhood, that probably goes for me. But then who am I to say that? I haven't gone and knocked on every door and said, hey. That's very do, true. Do you think about... Enlightenment and higher consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> you should do My that. My name's Chance. I'm your neighbor. <laughs> I have Interverse Podcast, and Give I just... my card. Yeah, you, you need to go dress like a Mormon, though, and you need to <laughs> be the Fellowship of Chance. The Fellowship of the Chance. Uh, if, yeah, if I'm a Mormon, I get to have magic underwear, so that's good. <laughs> but I don't know if I want to go as a Mormon. There's... You know, I like the witnesses approach. They're pretty pretty fiery. Yeah. But in general, I think I'm not into the evangelizing in person thing from door to door. I Okay. Yeah, I want to do the podcast evangelizing thing at festivals more. Not that it's not necessarily effective to just walk around and hand people cards and be like, "Hey, check out my podcast if you like podcasts." It's probably pretty effective. I just don't do that very well because uh -huh. I don't know if it's a confidence issue or if I just don't really want to be in people's face that hard. Where, and if I had a booth, people would come to me if they're interested and I don't have to, you know, do that sort of marketing hustle where trying to grab their attention in time. Mm -hmm. Man, that, um, on that note, you know, my, most of my sales and marketing experience obviously has been on the phone, you know, and I was put into a, corrupt environment and a corrupt position without fully understanding the implications of the the corruptness of the company that I was working for. You know, just not truly understanding what I was doing and eventually understanding what I was doing, getting comfortable with it, and then understanding it and hating it after this had all come full circle, you know. 
So now going into the more face-to-face -face marketing and sales that I'm doing, I know exactly what you mean. At least you have something to offer people though that's actually good for them now. Well, what's, so do you, what do you mean? Well, like, I mean, you didn't have that with the, oh, yeah. you know, where you're yeah. selling, or your, whatever the vacation package, <laughs> timeshare thing. I don't yeah. know what it was. Yeah, no, that's exactly Tele it. Telemarketing, though, it's all yeah. pretty much like aggressive time theft that occasionally turns into monetary theft. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very occasionally. For you're you're gone. your own worst enemy, you know, at the end of the day. And it's like, I don't want to feel like I am taking up someone's time. Like, there's so many more factors involved with face-to-face -face sales versus telemarketing. And I had honed telemarketing so much to the point where just using vocal tones and listening, I knew how to, not all the time, of course, but I could influence someone from no to yes, regardless of how much time or effort that it took on the phone. Um, just, you know, Jedi shit, literally. <laughs> um, and face to face, there's so much more involved in um, being conscious of my persona and facial expressions and how I hold myself and also being able to read them at the same time. That's a lot of calculating to do. Very much so. What I'm, what, see, what I do is I just bumble around and uh, smile a lot and... I, I do that too, to its <laughs> core, but I'm just saying... I do try to pay, t I do try to pay attention to the person I'm there with, you know, like, you know, of course that's what you mean by reading them, but... Uh, I, not that I have anything wrong with using the term reading them, but I guess the term I would use for myself is sensing them, mm -hmm. you know, going on. Because if you go in with the empathy approach, then they'll probably open up to you a lot faster and you'll also have, you'll understand them that much more quickly because as soon as somebody kind of gets the sense that you care, even people you've never met. Those walls and barriers come down. I find that people almost inevitably, like, Eight times out of ten, some random stranger that I meet that I show empathy to just in a passing moment or a initial meeting, mm -hmm. they'll almost, you know, like a highly conscious person doesn't do this, but a regular person oftentimes just goes, blah, and tells me whatever the worst thing in their life is right then. Yeah. And yeah. Not like necessarily in a complaining way, but it's almost just like, it's almost like they sense that you're shining some light at them and they're just like... Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's the here's what's going on, and it's never like usually help me or whatever, but it is a type of a cry for help in a sense because that's sort of what's on the exterior of their consciousness that immediately bubbles up as soon as some light is shine at them. And yeah. then, Anyway, when you get that from somebody, sometimes that's like. Sometimes you can actually say a kind word that will help them turn that around in a massive way that you could never expect, and then other times you might actually synchronistically find that you have something that could help them with that, especially a guy like you with the medicinal resources you now. Yeah. It's slain. just also though, I'm bound to tremendous limitations and what I'm able to, what and by what I'm able to say to these people. And it's like, obviously, you know, I can, I can recognize someone who partakes in cannabis. That's not hard at all. Once you start talking about it, their first reaction to CBD or hemp is going to pretty much determine how the rest of the conversation goes, you know? Um, it sucks that you have to work in this legality limbo of both being able to, what you can and can't say about the effects versus, dude, it's so stupid. How come the FDA... I don't care about the FDA, by the way. I'm not asking the FDA to change anything they're doing. They can go fuck themselves, actually. But <laughs> how come people think, well, the FDA says this medication here is fine for me. It is my antipsychotic medication. And it also has uh, side effects of runny stool, diarrhea, suicidal thoughts, and <laughs> 10 other things. <laughs> yeah. Since when did the 10 effects that happen besides the one that you want become side effects? That's effects. Those are the effects. Yeah. <laughs> and if... If they're allowed to say the only effect of this medicine is this and then put in small print, these are the side effects, how come people don't accept that uh, all the myriad positive effects are possible from natural products that aren't little compressed tablets of poisonous chemical? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you can't say those things like you can't even sell raw milk or you go to jail. So 
Yeah. Well, I mean, as long as you let them know that it wasn't pasteurized or... If you say that you have a cure for cancer, you get arrested. Yeah. You get arrested for all these things. You know, Elderberry um, Winery got raided by the FDA because they were saying that elderberries help cure cancer. Uh, Wildwood... Um, d- uh, raided. Celery. Like raided. They in raiders? Raided. They came in and they got their berries jacked. Do they have, like, guns and stuff? I don't know about that. You can look at it. Wildwood sellers. Basically, it doesn't matter. They come in with the suits or the guns, but if either way, the threat of violence is behind it, you know? Yeah. What we say, or we just take it all away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're going to take some of it away anyway. How, um, how is this not, tier- like, dude, this is the most tyrannical state that's ever existed, and people don't realize it. They're like, oh, we have so much freedom. We have all this stuff. Actually... You kept you have exactly what you have so that you'll stay in exactly the lines and boxes that you move in. Yeah. And yeah, whoop de doo, you get some you get some diet coke and uh, <laughs> whatever, or you get to choose between diet coke and diet Pepsi. You can directly tell <clears throat> false patriotism by going to any grocery store and seeing the morbidly obese people who have six to 12, 12 packs of diet soda in their shopping cart. Paid for with food stamps. Well, yes. I mean, you can buy them with food stamps. I'll say. I'll just say that they are taking that. I will say that though. They're taking that part out of EBT, but they're also destroying the program by not allowing local farmers' produce to be EBT accepted. It has to be processed, boxed, canned. <laughs> it can't be anything that's locally produced. Yeah, that is complete nonsense. That's complete nonsense. Well, it's a, it's just another. You know, think about. But why do we even need? to have these programs in the first place like what's the underlying root problem why are people unable to take care of themselves to the point that they need these programs and also why are we now in a system that in order to get anything that you need resource wise to live it's all controlled and distributed by things that require you to exchange these little green slips of paper or digital numbers to them and also be taxed and also have therefore your energy be going into all kinds of stuff that you don't even know about, including, you know, dropping bombs on people. How come we went from being a species that was completely like every other species, totally able to fend for itself and like always take care of itself, make what it needs, gather what it needs, right. provide for itself what it needs, to a species that is like a domesticated animal? And that's the question. When did we become... When did that happen? Yeah. And it, it didn't happen overnight, of course. Well, uh, it didn't happen overnight. It has something to do with some trauma in our ancient past. And I've been researching it heavily, trying to figure it out. But there's definitely some sort of traumatic event that happened in long ago that basically put this weird schism into our consciousness between left and right and male and female and free, freedom and and uh, control, I guess, order of chaos. I don't know. Shit's weird. How do we fix it? Um, legalize hemp and cannabis. Well, that's good, but it's still, like, anything coming from a legalized status is still, we're asking daddy to do this for us. You know? Well, of course. Give everyone access to it without fear or re- of repression. Yeah, that's a, that's a well said. That's a good way. But a quality of access to everything is really what's needed. Yeah. Equality is nothing unless you have a quality of access. Exactly. Same thing with healthcare. It's like, you know, <laughs> all, all these politicians talk about um, having access to a healthcare plan, but if it's $700 a month, how, how the fuck do you have access to it, you know, if you can't afford it? Yeah, like, that's how much my house costs. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great house. So, healthcare. So, sorry, back to what you were saying, though, earlier about psychotic medications. Um, That made me think of just how important the endocannabinoid system is as far as homeostasis in general. Um, There's a cannabinoid called THCV, tetrahydrocannabivarin, okay? And it is a CB1 and CB2 blocker. So... It also suppresses appetite. So in Europe in the 80s, they synthesized THCV and they ran it through clinical trials as a diet weight loss pill. And they did this first in mice and the mice went clinically depressed 
Um, <laughs> they suffered from all of these different these severe be a ailments. Lot to make a mouse depressed. I mean, <laughs> they must be the most cheerful things in the world to not normally be depressed that they're a fucking mouse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what does it take to actually make them depressed? Then <laughs> must be some heavy duty shit. A bunch of uh, terrible stuff happened. Ultimately, winding up, the the mice died um, from continuing to take the synthetic THCV. I like to say sacrificed. Yeah, they exactly. Sacrificed. Poor mice, dude. There is what's the count on number of billions of mice that are sacrificed to so many clinical other types trials? Of animals too, not just mice. Yeah. It's fucked up. Dude. Mice, by far, greatest number, though. That's the real Holocaust, people. Humans <laughs> versus animals. Think about it. How can the world sustain life if we exterminate over 60 billion creatures per year? Yeah, I think Cannot. that's that's one of the biggest screw-ups in our reality that is contributing to a, a number of different huge I issues we're having. I took topic, though. Sorry. Um, so, we all know that that's fucking bad stuff. Yeah. Bad animal stuff. Vegetarian, it's good. It's great. It helps. Yeah, it's a big help. But it's it's going to be needed though for the masses in order to combat climate change to the extent that it's needed at this point. Yeah, and the um, psychological imbalance is actually uh, connected to the the cult of carnism as well. Definitely, it, especially the willful ignorance of all the stuff going on that the state does. Is completely connected to the fact that in their in people's own personal lives, most people aren't psychopaths, or at least they're not primary psychopaths. So actually, in their hearts and in their unconscious, they know that what they do to animals every day when they eat 20 chicken wings and how many chickens died for your meal mm -hmm. just for lunch, you know, that's in there. Even the toughest, roughest cowboy, you know, inside of him is actually a little kid that would never hurt anything. Yeah. And... That's who they really are, mm -hmm. but the whole identity that they build out of society and culture, and the part, the big part of everyone's identity that I love my meat, I love bacon, you know, <laughs> whatever, and that's all been really well, fuck, really well seated with marketing too. Just bravo, yeah. I just have to say, amazing job, Satanists. Uh, but that, what that does is that you murder your inner child every time that you do something that your inner child would never do, or that horrifies your inner child. It's basically self. That's the that's self murder, and you. That's the repression of the true creative soul. That's the repression of your connection to source because your childhood self is way more connected to source because you were just there, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. And the time, time and timelessness are also one. So that you're actually doing the abuse to your childhood self that you received as a child by repressing your inner child as an adult, if that makes sense. Yeah, the longer, the, the longer that that goes on. And changing the behavior that represses the inner child begins to heal the psychological traumas of your, your childhood in much the same way. It doesn't change the events of the past, but it allows you to have the spiritual in, energy and the self-awareness because you're not ignoring and repressing yourself anymore to look at that, regain some memories that you've lost, Re-examine things that were traumatic or things that you did that you were that you never forgave yourself for heal all of that mentally mm -hmm. and that's what it means to actually heal your childhood self and heal the trauma of your childhood self by unrepressing yourself in the present but eating meat all the time whenever you yourself as an adult probably wouldn't even slaughter and clean an animal mm -hmm. that was in front of you for your own meal unless you were like you know and I'm not saying I wanted to know if I, if I was in some kind of Armageddon situation. Right, right. <laughs> things, there's degrees here, folks. But like, what we're doing is not in the name of survival. That's it's in the name I of guess, profit. That's what I'll close with there. Yeah, it's in the name of profit for sure. That was a good rant. Yes, it was. Great job on that. <laughs> uh, man, it's whenever the, the opportunity arises to shine light onto... You know, one of the most major fuck ups of humanity, you know, it, it just flows from that point. Yeah, and I've never actually put it in a psychological framework before. It's something that I think I understood, but I never explained outwardly. And you can't even sometimes access that type of those ideas in, in concrete forms until you're talking to somebody and you synthesize it yeah. in a conversation. You're like, oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. It does work like that. <laughs> yeah. But that's my own experience anyway. Yeah. Uh, I wish that all of the time, those spurts of consciousness that just flow out of you like a waterfall would just, you know, that'd be prevalent 100% of the time with anyone 
who is not exposed to that information already. You know, you get all of these wall blocks and you just can't formulate a full argument or not argument, but a full point, um, you know, to give them the information also with the right emotion to make them at least, you know, have that seed planted and watered rather than them just receiving all of that information and how oh, this this guy's a crazy vegan. <laughs> yeah. Well, the hell of trying to plant seeds is that sometimes the soil is so completely depleted and barren that it's just hopeless. And yeah, what, I, just what I mean by that is that there's such a vast gap in knowledge between you and I and some rando person off the street. Sometimes Not every person's this way. I'm not like judging the mass of humanity, but if you take your average dumb person, they're pretty dumb. They are very dumb. I mean, they, they, they choose it, but they also have it inflicted on them from the outside, and it's just this perfect storm of self-ignorance, you know? Yeah. And whenever you try to explain to them all the... Whatever angle you come at, say, let's say veganism, whatever arguments that you want to make for veganism, whether it's the emotional, psychological, morality argument, which I think should just end everything. <laughs> There's no right. morality <laughs> argument should just put the kibosh on it. But you, you go for the health aspect. doesn't matter. They have such a little understanding of how their own body works or how their own inner feelings um, look mm-hmm. that neither of those approaches work. And that goes, that gap in knowledge pretty much separates me from talking to anybody about energy, about uh, esoteric spirituality, about what really goes on in the Bible. I even try to quote their own book at them, and they're just like, I don't know what you mean. The Nephilim, I was told that means giants in Sunday school. (laughs) I I don't know what you mean about those that came from the heavens. I don't know the translations. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, there were spacemen in the Bible, people, and you don't even know it. (laughs) It's in the words, but we digress. Or maybe this whole thing is a digression. Maybe we should go ride bikes. Ultimately, um, well, hold on. THCV. Well, we should talk about what elderberry really can do for cancer because I want to know what you think about it. It has... Um, and then THCV, too. You want me to pour your coffee? I was just looking for my pen here. Um, coffee sounds great, yes. Okay. You talk about those things to me. So the elderberries have... Uh, an array of positive health benefits from immune system boosting to neuroprotectiveness to helping to reduce the incidence, the incidence of diabetes, lowers blood sugar, um, mostly known for their immune response though. And it's theorized that part of the reason for that tremendous immune response to elderberries beyond their high antioxidant capacity and they are loaded with active compounds that have been proven to help boost the immune system, like um, anthocyanins, flavonoids, bioflavonoids. Vitamin C? Um, they do have some vitamin C. Um, and most of these active compounds are found in the purple pigment of the elderberry. But um, raw elderberries also contain a minute amount of, actually not in raw, they contain a decent amount of a cyanide-like compound called cyanidin. And most of this cyanide-like compound gets broken down whenever they ripen. Um, They still contain minute amounts, but for any elderberry product that you're gonna buy off the market, um, the amounts of the cyanide have been um, denatured through uh, the pasteurization process. Well, people would give that as a reason why you shouldn't do elderberry. Yeah, that's one of the... We have gotten so many messages from people who are interested in ordering elderberry juice And we do have to recommend to people to talk with their doctor if it's something that they're unsure about. And many people, their rebuttal from their doctor to their response of asking for information on elderberries was, I would be careful, they're toxic, you shouldn't do it for that reason, here is Tamiflu. You know, and there's no knowledge, education whatsoever past that point. They don't actually Is this iced coffee? Yeah, it's iced cold brew coffee. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Probably not the healthiest thing that I drink constantly, but maybe I'll have some water with it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, coffee's yeah. good. Yeah, um, yeah, coffee's good. So, part of city. part of that immune response, it's theorized that the minute amounts of the cyanidin compound kind of help trigger the immune response. Your body recognizes it, but it's in such low amounts that it realizes it basically tricks itself into thinking that it needs to do something about this. Um, so there's kind of like a 
kind of like with cannabis, you have the entourage effect, all of the active compounds working together. Elderberries kind of works the same way. Um, but the individual compounds like anthocyanins, for example, have been found to have tremendous antiviral and anti-cancer effects. Everything from um, obviously the flu, herpes, HIV AIDS to cancer. And um, it basically, it helps regulate cytokine function in the body. Cytokines are a pivotal part in triggering an immune response, basically helping to flood your body with white blood cells to help fight off viruses. Um, but anthocyanins, basically the compounds help your body encapsulate viruses and keep them from spreading. And this is all done naturally in your body, of course. There's no magic or anything like that. It is just working in synthesis with your body. Dude, your body is magic. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> essentially. It heals itself. That's magic. But, hey, you know, as much as you know about this elderberry stuff, it's even like, and you're good at explaining it to someone that doesn't like to learn new stuff if they were hearing some words that i don't exactly know even though you're explaining them to me and i'm following you they would just shut down and just be like your jargon is in unintelligible to me or on the on the other flip coin of the side of that you know someone could be used very intelligent just at being able to articulate it or something like that but you definitely have those people that are like hey i'll go eat chicken wings and <laughs> Drink my Tamiflu or my... <laughs> and you've explained it to me as easily as you would need to explain it to a five-year-old for them to get it. And that's all you need to be able to do for anybody yeah. that's willing to be open. Right, right. Uh, I'll stop bitching about people that aren't open. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, I also, people. <laughs> you know, we are... It, I mean, it pretty much has to be explained in that manner and also explained that it is just helping your body naturally do what it is supposed to do. But you think about your average person's nutrition and all the toxins that are ingested are, you know, every part of our body, every single one of our systems is compromised in some way that is keeping it from doing what it naturally needs to do. And that is really, you know, as so influential true. as the endocannabinoid system is, as far as homeostasis is concerned, um, you know, I haven't been sick in a year and a half now. Um, I'm normally, I'll normally get sick one, at least once or twice a year, sometimes three times a year, generally whenever flu and cold season comes around. And I'm biased, of course, in the industry that I participate in. But, um, you know, from somewhat regular elderberry supplementation, I'd say three or four times a week, along with copious amounts of CBD, the worst that I've gotten in the year in the past year and a half was a day of mild symptoms that never progressed into a full on cold flu. I think that. I'm not even personally convinced that the whole germ model of disease and the and how viruses are said to work. I'm I pretty much don't believe anything. Mm -hmm. I I I think it's a lot easier to scrap all the stuff we've ever been told and just look at things from a personal experience and in internal level as everything being energy. And so that's why I think some of the concepts of even demons and things like that in the past might have even originated with people who are having physical ailments and diseases. And it, psychology has psychology research has proven that many ailments stem from psychosomatic problems. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, your mindset influences your physiology a huge amount as to how um, vulnerable you are to certain things. But yeah. also your energy. If you look at things as energy, there is physical energy going on in your body. Yeah. So my personal experience since I started trying to pay more attention to things from an energy level about getting sick is there's basically two components to not getting sick or to keeping yourself uh, from getting sick. One is definitely getting enough sleep. It's been the only times I've ever started to get any kind of symptoms of getting raggedy were when I went too long, too many days with not enough sleep. and just not letting my body have that time to do its thing and heal itself mm -hmm. and energetically recharge. And then the other thing is proper nutrients that your body needs for fighting off sickness. Elderberry is a great source of that kind of thing. I haven't supplemented it probably as much as you, but I definitely, anytime I've started to get a sniffle, mm -hmm. I've used elderberry and then occasionally just, yeah, uh, occasionally just because like I love elderberry jam. It's the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those things combined and then me personally taking um, vitamin C in big doses regularly. That's the what I've personally 
attributing the most to my well-being. Yeah, even something as simple as vitamin C, C, just taking it regularly. um, You know, you don't need 10,000 milligrams. Your body can only absorb so much of that at a single dose. I saw a YouTube video of a doctor who got meningitis, I think it was. Not meningitis. It was uh, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, not meningitis. That's pretty bad. (laughs) He got pneumonia. Long letter board. He... Definitely was di- he like self diagnosed himself with it. You could see in the video he's symptomatic. He started taking vitamin C, and I don't know the exact dosage, but it was a pretty high dosage. Mm-hmm. And he was taking it like every th- six minutes or something. And three hours later, he was completely cleared up of all symptoms, and they didn't come back. Wow. Yeah, but did you know that you have the right, the right when you go to the hospital to ask for vitamin C um, injections? Yeah. As an alternative therapy. And if they don't have it, they have to send you to somewhere that does. Or they have to tell you somewhere that does really? offer that. Yes. It's so important. It's not even funny. Yeah. Like how much your body can do with vitamin C. It, and I never really quite understood it. Especially because things that said that they had vitamin C in it. Like Sunny Delight or some fucking <laughs> sugar juice that <laughs> they claim to be from oranges. Uh, you know, I never saw anything beneficial from directly experiencing drinking that and then living my life. But and taking a lot of vitamin C over, like pharmaceutical supplements, are sketchy to minorly effective at best. Mm-hmm. I found so. And I'm not a doctor. I can't give you health advice. I don't even like doctors, though. So I don't know why you would take <laughs> health advice from them. Uh, my experience with vitamin C, taking a high grade, a high quality. I even got this really high quality kind that uh, is emulsified in this soy flour lectin Mm -hmm. and it lets your body have a much higher absorption rate because it's your your cells more easily absorbed lipids goes to the bilayer properly so you like take in all of the vitamin C and it's a quality version of vitamin C as well all whole foods whole food grade stuff found it online but anyway, since I've been taking that, it has no fillers or sugars or anything. Mm-hmm. It's improved mental clarity. I don't yep. get sick. I stopped having allergies. Anytime I ever start to get a little bit of a stuffy nose or something, mm-hmm. if I just take some water with electrolytes and vitamin C in it, just like a packet, mm-hmm. you can get those things at whole food markets or supplement stores, just get organic ones. Mm-hmm. That totally clears up my allergies. Maybe I'm different than other people, but I seem to have found what was deficient in me that was causing me to have allergies. Um, now, the fact that I'm still susceptible to them, who knows what that's from? Maybe it's from vaccines. Maybe it's from the chemtrails. Maybe it's from <laughs> the bad diet for most of my life. Uh, who knows? But it does seem to completely suppress those symptoms uh, or I guess like alleviate them, not really suppress them, mm-hmm. to do lots and lots of high-quality vitamin C. Man, it's so easy to take care of yourself in today's day and age. That's what people don't realize. Yeah. So much easier to do a little better than you're doing right now. There's hard stuff that you could be doing that would be better as well, but there's lots of easy stuff. You should just start there. Well, people openly poison themselves and... Ignore it. Well, many people, yeah. I mean, they don't understand the severity. Uh, you, your body, you know, your body is so out of whack that... It thinks everything is fine. It becomes adjusted to that environment. And until something major comes up that it's like, you know, is a direct result of that toxic environment. At that point, whenever you go to the doctor, you are um, you're not taking care of the problem fully. You are you know, you're putting a Band-Aid on on the issue and then you're kicking the can down the road. Well, yeah, people, it's basically like treating your car or your body like a used car. Yeah, that you exactly. Think you can just swap out parts whenever they break and you'll be fine. Yeah. But it's a holistic system. It's all one big energy system. Even the, you can even, you can look at it from an energy perspective with your food. Like some foods have higher energy and more life force in them than yeah. others, yeah. obviously. And then you can also look at it like there's energy systems within you that have a different receptivity to different types of food depending on what you've cultivated within yourself through your behavior. And what I mean by that is just your gut bacteria, your gut biome has such a huge role whenever, that's why some, basically that's why somebody that's in a really unhealthy vibration, really constantly eating toxic stuff, that's why they can eat a giant bag of McDonald's and feel like, oh, that's exactly what I needed, I feel good now. Yeah. Because their body's actually, their gut biome is specifically the type of bacteria that feed on 
that type of shit. And so that's why they don't, they're A, not attracted to vegetables and things like that, and B, when they do eat it, they don't feel satisfied or fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And someone who has changed their gut, gut bacteria makeup through doing cleanses is a great way to do it, colon cleanses. Mm -hmm. I think everyone should do that occasionally. I've only done it once in my life and it was massively helpful mm -hmm. for this exact issue. After doing that, it was a lot easier to um, fully assimilate my vegetarian lifestyle. Not that I wasn't mentally, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally ready mm -hmm. and already switched, but my digestion didn't c catch up with my, the rest of my, my physical didn't catch yeah, up. Yeah, no, it's exactly. Still to catch up, you yeah, know? Yeah. So doing a cleanse, reset all of that, flushed out the system, mm -hmm. started over, and then all of a sudden my poops were solid again. But, and then I was attracted to vegetables even more than I was before. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't like I was making a choice anymore. It's just what I wanted, and the other stuff didn't sound good. And it's because that bacteria actually influences your mind. Oh, it yeah. gives you cravings for stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. That's all I have to say about that. THCV. So this, this, is, this is how scientists found out all of the different functions that the endocannabinoid system affects throughout the body. So what they found was whenever they introduced this synthetic THCV, the diet weight loss pill, into humans, um, the, similar things were happening to the mice. They were becoming, um, they lost their appetite. They had some of the worst anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. Um, basically, their bodies were destroying themselves mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, and this was happening from THCV being a CB1 and CB2 blocker. So they listed all of these side effects that these humans were experiencing, and that is how they found out the role of the endocannabinoid system, was if these are blocked, these side effects are a direct result of these receptors being blocked. So, so that must mean that there's some sort of internal production of those um, compounds. The CB1 and CB2 receptors? Because they're not giving them the CB, they're not giving them cannabinoids, right? They're just blocking them. Well, they're introducing a synthetic cannabinoid. And that's what's causing The natural version of THCV actually suppresses appetite, whereas THC or THCA stimulates appetite. Huh, okay. So um, what happens whenever CBD is introduced into the body, it is kind of the, the central key in unlocking, um, basically regulating the endocannabinoid system to the point that it needs to be. So that's why the effects that you see whenever someone takes CBD is very subjective. It depends on what is ailing the person. So for example, someone who um, is in pretty decent health, they're, they're pretty well off, they have a good diet, they have a good mindset. The most that you'll really notice is maybe if you have some, some aches in your joints, anything like that, you'll notice that the pain from those will be alleviated or you might feel a little bit more mentally or like a cup of coffee in the morning, for example. Whereas someone who has seizures, given that they take the right amount in the right conditions, um, a lot of times those seizures are greatly relieved. They see a tremendous relief in the number of seizures that are occurring daily. I know people personally that aren't even kids that it's helped them with stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a bigger question. Why exactly are you having seizures? But Well, your neurons are misfiring. So yeah. It, you know, what from, let's say, just a very basic description, think about your cells, you know, trying to get back to homeostasis or regular optimum, uh, regular functioning, you know, it's chilling them out, essentially, yeah. you know. Um, Balancing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, someone with chronic back pain, they'll notice that the amount of pain that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis is dramatically decreased. Um Anything from um, anxiety, someone who is depressed or with PTSD in a very bad state of mind, they're finding that it's greatly relieving a lot of those symptoms that are associated with that. I wonder if it has something to do with triggering placebo and not saying that placebo is like what I feel about placebo to define that because a lot of people just use it as a medical term and like, oh, just that's the placebo effect. They never explain it, but they just say placebo effect and they, I guess that means that we understand it obviously it has something to do with the way your consciousness impacts your your body and your mindset can change your body's behavior you know yeah I so mean, I, I wonder if it may be just in some way it consistently can relax a person mm -hmm. to take CBD that's one thing that's not very subjective 
it's pretty consistent. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if that kind of relaxation, in a way, helps them forget about the fact that they're having the problem to the extent that their body relaxes it for that reason. Well, I do believe, I definitely believe in the placebo effect for CBD, but the problem is the way that the CBD industry is regulated currently, you have CBD coming from a variety of sources, whether it's sourced domestically or internationally, and you also have synthetic CBD that's flooding the market as well. So true CBD, if you have organically sourced, non-GMO, hemp grown without pesticides, any additional additives, anything like that, and you source your CBD, whether it's full spectrum, whether it has isolate, of course, full spectrum is going to have more benefits since you have a full spectrum of cannabinoids, all of the terpenes, holistic. the waxes, it, but yeah, the holistic plant matter that you're using versus isolate. As long as um, the sourcing is done correctly and you are giving your body the right absorption method to where it can, you know, wholly absorb that in the manner that it needs to, um, it seems to have benefits, like real benefits that can be measured in real time. Um, basically what it's doing is your... Real physical benefits beyond placebo, you mean? Like it's really got some component to it that's mechanically unlocking things in your body. Yes, yeah, so it is the... It seems to be the central modulator as far as optimizing your endocannabinoid production within your body. So... Um, there's and there's hundreds of endocannabinoids, but there's only been research mainly done on ananamide and 2-AG. Ananamide is like the body's own synthetic THC, so it is a great pain reliever. Um, it helps reduce oxidative stress, um, a number of different roles that it has. But one of its central roles is in modulating pain. Okay, so if you have lots of ananamide that's present in your body, you will feel less pain. So whenever you normally get injured, if you have a depleted endocannabinoid system, you're producing very low amounts of anandamide. Your body is using up anandamide faster than it can replenish itself with. Whenever you ingest CBD and you have pain, anandamide floods itself at the side of the pain receptors and your body can't use it up as quickly. So it helps to alleviate a lot of that pain just by being present within the body. I don't know exactly, you know, I couldn't explain biologically the full extent of that but that is the central idea behind what cbd is doing and the pain relief causes a relaxation as well yes and so with muscular injury that's probably why back pain benefits so much because a lot of the time the pain is caused by the fact that the muscles can't relax yeah they're, they're in pain and so they aren't relaxing because it hurts and so they keep tensing which causes the pain and it just stays in this like sort of unbalanced pain loop you know yeah. and Magnesium is another hugely helpful thing for that because it is the molecule you're, at least from what I understand, it's what your cells actually use to relax. It's like the currency that it spends to uh, release muscles whenever they are contracted. So you like mm-hmm. really need that as well. And I feel like people that are hearing about some of these things for the first time definitely should feel it encouraged to both check out this stuff but also do your own research you know i'm not entirely sure what why you would do something like take too much magnesium if you bought some and you (sighs) there's obviously gonna be instructions on it but you know with certain things there's always too too much as possible with certain supplements too much as possible and then if we had the right diets if we had the right nutrition giving our our bodies the right keys even organic vegetables don't have the nutrient content that they should because of soil depletion yeah you know, if we had all that, then we wouldn't need any of the supplementation other than, you know, of course we might want some cannabinoids. <laughs> yes, indeed. indeed. <laughs> it seems that that's a little bit necessary. Well, no. on that note, I just want to reference um, Raphael Mishulam. If anyone would like to interest or um, research further into cannabinoids, the discovery of the endocannabinoid system, as well as the isolation of the THC molecule is done by the Israel um, re- cannabis researcher, Raphael Meshulam. And he also effectively proved in the 60s that THC was a cure for epilepsy. And he submitted his findings to the FDA and received absolutely nothing other than crickets back. He didn't receive any response whatsoever. Lucky he didn't get assassinated. Yeah, the, the, very good point as well. Um, He's still alive today, still hammering out research. Um, he's 
He's, he's done a lot for the progression of the cannabis industry in general from the uh, scientific standpoint. That's cool. I'll link that um, if I can figure out how to spell it from the, from what you said. I'm sure if I just type like... Uh, Meshulam, or uh, Raphael, R-A-P-H-A-E-L, right. Meshulam, M-E-C-H-O-U-L-A-M. Okay, thanks. Maybe well, E-M. Now I yeah. can find it for yeah. sure. Yeah. Although that's the great thing about Google. You can totally fuck up your spelling. If you throw in the right keywords, it'll be all right. If I was just like... Rafael Mashuka, <laughs> CBD THC research. It would be like, did you mean this motherfucker? Exactly. Thank there's, you, Google. Name and, for me. And there's really good documentaries on him as well. He did um, his own clinical trials with his wife and a group of friends of theirs, and they all partake. They, I, I believe it was brownies that they ingested, <laughs> and he noted the. Um, there, were, there was 10 people total. He noted the responses of everybody, and most everybody was having a good time and was giggly and laughing and. Um, just having a ball with it. Speaking of links, is your Bloom website ready to uh, show to the public? Um, it is up currently. Um, it is not 100% it's finished, but I would, right? yeah, of course. Um, it's, it's viewable at this point. You're not able to purchase products at this time because we are linking a payment processor up to it, and that is a bit of a struggle given the um, regulations and restrictions that we have to abide by. But it can be found at Bloom, which is B-L-O-E-M, C-B-D dot com. Um, do you have local retailers that carry it uh, listed there? We do. We do. We have. Because um, I've seen it in a few shops. Awesome. Good to hear. Yeah. Uh, and more on the way, of course. But currently, um, Kaleidoscope, Fuzzy Bubble, 417 Vapor, um, Absolute Wellness. They're a wellness practitioner on the north side of town. Um and an assortment of chiropractors and other medical settings throughout town. But, yeah, so as far as um, easy access, I would recommend any of the first retailers. Awesome, dude. I guess we should go maybe ride our bikes now. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. I want to thank you for checking it out, and I hope you do investigate some of the things that we spoke on, especially elderberry and CBD products. Elderberry, in particular, is in incredibly affordable. It's a lot cheaper than going to the doctor, going to a walk-in clinic, buying cold medicine, stuff like that. And it tastes good. Uh, you don't even have to do it as juice. I actually really like elderberry jelly uh, with a nice little bit of almond butter or peanut butter. It's super good. And it's helpful. It really is helpful. Helpful and healthful. So thanks a lot, Kyler, for coming over and hanging out with me for a little while and talking about what you've been up to. I think it's pretty awesome to see my own close friends getting so far along in their own personal passions and exploring what it is that they're here to do to help others. So, you know, this could be a path for you, someone listening, something we don't talk about as much, but because this show is focused on art and on music and on writing and philosophy and podcasting, but getting involved with some of these holistic approaches towards helping people with their health problems is going to be more and more needed. I mean, it's needed right now, but more and more people are waking up to the fact that they need some help, they need some education. And it's a great opportunity when there's a problem for us to mutually all mutually benefit in the solving of that problem. It's kind of awesome. So check out these resources that are going to be linked in the show notes, Kyler's websites, Elderberry Depot and the Bloom website. And also we linked some research from the Raphael Meshulam CBD cannabinoid researcher that Kyler mentioned. So check out the show notes. There's also links to the music in this podcast episode. I do want to apologize to everybody who's a plus subscriber, uh, Patreon subscribers, for the episode being kind of late since the last one, 4.4. And that's because I did have a mishap scheduling where a guest that I had planned wasn't able to come at the last minute. So... It kind of threw me off. I'm not ahead of my game enough as I'd like to be in having more recordings in the shoot than I, um, than I need for the week. So I'm going to be working on improving that. And Kyler did do me a nice solid favor in doing a mini episode here together. And I think it turned out pretty great. So once again, thanks to Kyler. Thanks for your patience and the uh, length of time it took for this episode to come out. And there is some really good news on that front, actually. I have a great friend named Chris who has agreed to help me out on the scheduling and reaching out to new guests type of work that I find 
so difficult to stay consistent with. And we're going to share a calendar. Together, we're going to make sure that this podcast has got four or five solid episodes with plus extensions every month. It's going to be great. We've already got a couple of uh, upcoming episodes scheduled for some super good interviews. Really excited to share what's coming with you guys. And I have to thank you for all the support you've given me over the last year that I've been on Patreon with your help and with some cryptocurrency money and also with some tax return money that I got from going solar this year. I'm actually able to get a brand new computer. I know you've heard me complaining about my terrible laptop if you've listened to the show for very long as a way to try to make you feel sorry for me and help help me out with some voluntary donations on Patreon. And finally, that problem has been solved, though. Tomorrow it should be showing up in the mail. It's basically God's computer. I'm going to have a really nice rig to do all the editing I want, both video, audio, and heavy-duty, crazy fractal 3D graphics. So stay tuned. I'm going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff. This podcast really just feels like the first two years were me sort of getting my footing and figuring out what's going on, how to actually do what I want to do, what I actually want to do. And it's cool. I feel almost like I'm at a beginning, like a new beginning with the show where some really great foundations have been laid and some new connections have been formed. And now that I've got somebody to be a partner in this mission with my buddy Chris doing the uh, scheduling assistance that he's going to be providing, there's really nothing holding this back from really expanding into one of the most useful podcasts you've got in your repertoire. At least I hope so. I especially think the last few episodes that we've done really did have some actionable, helpful things and techniques and concepts that we could all stand to integrate and learn more about and especially share with others. So I hope that you agree and you've enjoyed the podcast and stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more coming soon. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for listening. And if you do want to support me a little further and also get an awesome shirt, we've got Interverse t-shirts available on the website now for the first time. I've got one myself. They're made by a company called Design by Humans, where it's all produced in the United States out of ecologically friendly methods and materials. So order one of those. They're pretty snazzy. They've got the new logo that I designed a few weeks back on them. Also, if you want a little bit more of me ranting about the truth, <laughs> then why don't you check out my recent appearance over on Spiritual Phoenix podcast with Ross Cessna. Ross was a guest on Interverse back in January, and I returned the favor and came on his show, and it was a great time. I'm not sure if it's quite out yet, but if it's not, just wait a day or two. He said he'd have it out pretty soon. So I'll link to that in the show notes as well once the uh, and on the website as a post once, the, once I'm sure that that episode's out. So anyway, thanks so much for being with me. I love you guys. I hope you are healthy and flu-free, cold-free. Don't get flu vaccines. <laughs> Watch out for that. Okay, check out the show notes for the music, the website links, and the Patreon link where you can subscribe to the podcast and get some cool bonuses, including access to the subscriber patron hangouts we've been doing been going live with some subscribers once a month. I might even start doing that more often because it's so much fun. I hope you guys are having a wonderful life and stay groovy. I don't know. I'm done rambling. This was all off the cuff. Usually I write these things. I hope it was okay. Yeah, I just wanted to get this podcast episode out. Sorry for the delay again. And uh, all right, bye. Bye.